we rapidly and uh, a size of the solar array not being known at this point. Um, it's really, again, the, the engineer's recommendation to not uh, consider any components to be installed at this point. Uh, however, to move towards uh, you know, the potential uh, inclusion or installation of a solar panel uh, system at Proviso East. Mike, if you want to go to the next slide. Uh, the first step really is to you know start looking at available area. You know where can we put solar panels? Do we want to put them on the roof? Do they want to be on the ground? Um, you know, doing a study of potential power generation. You know, what what is our aim here? How many kilowatt uh, kilowatts are we looking to generate? Um, and, and really start to identify it, just an order of magnitude of the project cost for the uh, array installation. Um, and finally, you know, kind of one of the last key things would be to start determining what, what is the offset energy production? What, what can this do to take power off the grid or you know, sell power back into the system um, and, and do a life cycle assessment as to you know, what, what does a long-term uh, power generation uh, vision look like for Proviso East? The next step after that, you know, kind of one of the critical components, it kind of goes lockstep with the initial design, is really to determine funding strategy because a lot of times that will impact the amount of solar that gets installed um, as well as its goals. You know, there are some uh, district funded uh, self-funding strategies, for example, on the right, based on grants and incentives that can provide some uh, contribution to the a solar project. However, programs like the ICCFs and Solar Schools Grant Program are more centered around education. You know, they only fund up to like one kilowatt, which is a fairly uh, a trivial amount of power generation, but it's meant to be used as an educational tool. So um, one of the more common self-funded strategies is the use of solar renewal, excuse me, solar renewable energy credits, which is essentially selling power back to the marketplace. Um, obviously, this is something where you know the value payback period fluctuates as energy prices, supply demand fluctuates. But this is uh, something that uh, public institutions have used uh, to some success. Oh, we lost your audio. Oh, you guys got me. Hello. Good. Thumbs up. Anyone? Thumbs up. I can okay. hear you. OK, uh, did you catch me? Solar oh. renewable energy credits? I heard everything. Oh, okay. I good, did good. also. OK, I think they were um, talking to someone else. So the uh, I'll, I'll I'll take the uh, the last slide here. So the, the, yeah. uh, there's a variety of obviously options for how we can uh, uh, look after grants and options uh, how the how the system can be installed if it, it's, it's either directly purchased or if it's uh, through agreements with a local or regional um, uh, providers that can that can help. Uh, supplement the purchase power or uh, additional grants and incentives there as well. So uh, any additional questions on solar uh, from what is sorry for stumbling through that last slide there. I'm not as. Are additional questions, comments? No, thank you for uh, thank taking the time to examine the whole solar, solar issue. Uh, next on the on the docket. Uh, guys, one, one comment. Um, whatever context you have for those grants or those various solar programs, if you could just forward them, I'd love to take a look at them. Yeah, Great idea, send, Mr. Moody. We can send over a couple of uh, uh, website links uh, to those mentioned there. All right, next up is Gilbain. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, here is our update from the CM perspective. First up, we, um, as was mentioned, we are currently out to bid for the next phase of work over at Proviso West and East. We held a contractor outreach session on February 21st. The deadline for questions and RFIs was uh, February 24th. We are looking to get bids back from our subcontractor community by March 3rd. That is on Thursday. We will host scope review meetings in the next uh, week and at the end of this week. So March 4th through the 9th. 
And then we anticipate the date of the contract award being March 16th. Other work that we're looking to do as we prepare for the summer work, we need to start the ACM remediation work by April 15th. And then all other trades, we are hoping to bring them on board by June 1st with substantial completion of the work achieved sometime on or around August the 10th is what we're looking for. The bid packages that are currently out on the street for both East and West are on the screen. I won't read them. If there are any questions about the bid packages, I'll take any questions um, now or, or if anyone has any at the end. But there are a variety of bid packages on the street as we seek to do the HVAC work at both uh, schools. A couple of other items we'd like to discuss uh, briefly, our diversity and economic inclusion plan. So it's the mission of Gilbane to create an inclusion work culture environment and business model that leverages the capabilities of our diverse employee population and our vendor and trade contractor community to create greater value for our employees, clients, and others. So as a company across our 48 offices, um, we have a goal of 20% participation for uh, corporate small and diverse participation for all of our projects, which we instituted globally in 2020. So our approach to diversity in order to successfully attain those numbers and go after it is that we will break up our uh, bid packages. And so our bid packages are aligned to the marketplace and the capacity. So on that couple slides back, you saw the different bid packages. We broke them up into smaller packages to give some of those smaller firms an opportunity to bid the work as sometimes they don't have the, the bonding capacity or the uh, manpower capacity to bid larger scopes of work by putting it into smaller packages we're hoping to reach a broader subcontractor community. We have a multifaceted approach to outreach. So I mentioned that we held our outreach session um, on February 21st over at East, where we invited subcontractors in the community to come out and hear about the project, to walk the project and to learn more about it. But we also use it as an opportunity to pair contractors with others. And so the intent or the hope is that some of the smaller contractors, again, that perhaps aren't able to do the projects on their own, are able to get an opportunity to do the projects by partnering with some of the larger subcontractors in our community. We've actually received a couple of uh, inquiries from folks about that. And so I'm happy to report that our procurement department, even as of today, it has been responding to uh, inquiries and partnering or pairing subcontractors together in hopes to create some opportunities again for those diverse and small businesses. Uh, by doing this, we've been able to prove that uh, if we address some of the barriers that keep small businesses from doing work, then we can actually you know, create a successful model for them. We also have a comprehensive monitoring and reporting of the different uh, goals and we're able to provide that information accordingly. With that being said, for this project, the economic inclusion goal was 15% or is 15%. We, uh, at the time of our contract, had a commitment of 10% and right now pay to date as of January 15th. And when we talk about pay to date, is how much we have actually physically sent payments over to those small or diverse businesses right now um, as the basis of the contract, we're at 9%. We do have a couple of uh, payment applications that are pending or open. And so we're working to close out contracts as we finish this last phase of the project. And as soon as we uh, make those payments, then we'll update our participation accordingly. That concludes my report. Do we have any questions? I do. I do have one question, Michelle, really quick. Um, I'm thinking a little bit ahead, but with the sunshine and the warmer temperatures, I'm wondering if you guys are going to be able to do your internship program again this summer. We can do our internship program again this summer. We'd like to open it up to just one lucky student this summer. And okay. so um, I'll take a look at that and probably implement the same process. And that process was you know, we sent the information out. Uh, we are seeking students that are 16 years of age or older. 
Right. And um, so typically that opportunity is just for your juniors and seniors within the three high schools. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll do a short interview process. It was essentially we opened it up to um, a video. I think it was a two minute video about yourself and why this op this uh, internship opportunity was such a great opportunity. And then our internal HR department will make a decision and an award from there. Okay, thank you. Let me make a note. Does anyone else have any questions for Michelle about Gilbane projects? All right, then we will move on to LT and see what he's got. Your mic is off, LT. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing um, all the bid package, Michelle. Um, uh, there's going to be 20 bid packages. It's going to be open on Thursday. The scope reviews will follow the next day. Uh, I wanted to thank Gilbane for putting together the community outreach session to engage WBE and MBE participation firms. Uh, I was told that there was a few uh, on site and I were really hoping that they engage in conversations about bidding on this project. Um, great question earlier on, Ms. Grant. Uh, Wayne Proviso is requesting two construction student interns for the 2022 program. It'd be nice to uh, do a professional interview session like you guys did last year. We want to thank you for reaching out to our scholars. Um, moving on to the college fair for at Proviso West tomorrow. Um, we wanted to share this information because this, there's going to be over 60 universities and colleges at Proviso West tomorrow starting at 1 p.m. Uh, all three schools will be invited. Transportation will be provided and snacks. Uh, moving on to Orkin Pest Control. We had a, a minor issue that was manageable over at Proviso West High School. Um, Orkin was out this weekend for roughly eight hours on Friday, eight hours on Saturday and Sunday. We have this issue under control as we speak, and we will be evaluating uh, the pest control um, process in the near future to ensure that it is successful. Uh, we will be asking all three, I'm sorry, Proviso East and Proviso West to start construction packing um, classrooms and offices to ensure that all of the goods are out of the offices and the classrooms. Uh, we don't want anyone uh, belongings to get misplaced. Uh, moving on to the Illinois High School Sports Association. We have a sectional starting tonight. Uh, moving on to Wednesday and Friday is the championship game. Uh, today on the facility updates, we're going to be doing a little cross training. So I want to ask Al if he would please do uh, the next slide. Ella, you're on? Uh, yes, thank you, LT. Uh, so over at uh, Proviso East High School, we actually had a leak in one of our ceilings uh, over by room two. So we were actually able to uh, stop that leak with a, with a clamp. But while we were doing our investigation work, we did notice that our sub ceiling had a uh, fall, fall. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's starting to bend the pipe there. So we're looking at uh, addressing that issue. We've also been, uh, the toilets over at Proviso, uh, Proviso East, uh, the 135A women's bathroom. It had a clog in the waistline. Our team was able to remove the access panel from the clean out. They rotted it about 50 feet uh, to make sure that there was no more issues and they got the bathroom back up in service. We also had a leak come out of the heater from the library office. Um, as you can see, uh, the operator fittings were replaced and the steam trap ended up being the issue. Uh, that little gold thing on the steam trap, that is the diaphragm. That's what allows our condensate to come back and that is now operational. Uh, lastly, 
uh, the Boiler Room Proviso East uh, has been working on our air handler units for the woodshed building uh, PMs. Uh, they did find that a belt had dry rotted and uh, they replaced it with the new one. Uh, they've been working on changing filters and greasing motors as well to make sure that the units keep running safely. Uh, the team has also been checking fire extinguishers as part of their preventative maintenance work and making sure that any of have been, you know, shot off or were damaged would be replaced. And then Proviso East also got to hold some of the regional basketball games for both boys and girls. So it was very, very uh, nice thing to have. We made sure that the handicap, handicap lift was uh, tested and all the safeties were checked before the games begun. Thank you. Uh, any questions on the Proviso East updates? If not, we'll move on to the Proviso West updates. So over at Proviso West, uh, the air handling units for the student calf, preventative maintenance techniques were performed. We changed the filters out. We changed the belts. We also did grease, grease fittings, uh, grease, grease fittings over there. And we're moving on to the administration building as well to make sure that every 30 to 35 days or so, uh, these filters are changed out to support COVID-19. Over at Proviso West, we also have started the new implementation of IC cores in all of our storage rooms and offices. Uh, this program was started about three to four years ago. It's about time that we uh, bring it back up to speed and finish the remaining portion of the building. Uh, over at Proviso East in the C tunnel, uh, in the C tunnel, we had a glycol leak um, on our BNG pump and also on our large gate valve. I believe it's a 12 inch. This work is manageable. We are working with Helm Group to come up with a scope of work and get the proper valve and get it installed. We will be bringing this back to the facility meeting in the near future to make sure that we get um, buy in on moving forward with purchasing the devices and installing them. Um, Mr. Leon House, you want to do the math and science updates? Yes, hello. Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, Miss uh, Arlene uh, Sabato as our benefits coordinator. She was relocated from the business office up to the fifth floor um, uh, HR section so it can be more efficient for her to work with that group. Uh, we basically had to uh, make her enclosures for her sneeze guards because she has a medical uh, issue. So we had to uh, restructure the sneeze guard and rebuild that framing system for her with the plexiglass. So she's happy. And so she's all good to go for that now. Uh, next thing, uh, one of our first largest uh, uh, snows that we encountered, uh, we have uh, our Kubota. Uh, the the snow plow's piston uh, was disconnected. It fell out, so it was uh, so we were able to uh, to purchase one right away, and uh, we completed all the repairs and put it back together. And so after the snow thawed, we found the pin. So so that's all good to go. Also, uh, lastly, we had an emergency sprinkler repair with uh, uh, JCI and uh, our our maintenance team also began this project uh, a little while back. Uh, where it sprung a leak and it was a uh, pretty intensive and so we had to shut down the sprinkler system only to just a quarter zone of the lower level of the building um, so we still encountered more uh, leaks beyond that and so we uh, we assisted with the contractors to assist with replacing that piping between two of the sprinkler valves totally so that's all complete and we got rid of all the, our fire alarm uh, codes are gone um, our, our pumps are, the jockey pumps are all been repressurized and this side of the building is up and running. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it for Professor Math and Science Academy. Is there any questions about the updates? All right. Kick me off. I do want to stop sharing here. All right. Do we have any other updates? Uh, that is it for the facilities. All right. It was nice to hear from our building leads. So thank you for jumping in. Um, the only new business we have is the announcement of our next meeting, which will be on April 5th. Um, and we will see you all then, if not at the board meeting on uh, March 15th coming up. So 
Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us today. We appreciate all the information, and we will see you next month. Take care, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good Thank afternoon. You, you too.